All right. We're live now. Okay, cool. So <clears throat> I guess um, we're going to go ahead and start. And um, we have our audio, and we're ready to go. All right. So here we go. So the first thing I wanted to talk about was um, some of the things we changed here in the recent version, moving from version uh, 5.6.8 to um, the latest version 5.7.8.0. So one of the things I tried to do by uh, customer suggestion is you'll see the top row of buttons and things kind of, um, not kind of, it, it looks cleaner. We, we remove the clutter. But some of the things that you're used to seeing are now missing. So the first thing I wanted to talk about is the sweepers. So the sweepers work exactly the same way they did before, um, but now they um, you can hide them because you don't need to see them all the time, right? And it, it just creates for a, a better visual experience. So to get to your sweepers now, this little button here Hopefully you guys can see my cursor. Um, right below the automated title announce, you'll see um, there's a button that shows the sweepers. So to import sweepers, you would do the same. You would drag and drop them in there. It behaves exactly the same as it did before. The only thing is it's hidden most of the time because you don't need to see it. Um, similarly, the, um, the robo voice and automated send so i can press the send button and send a message to players so i if i can you know i can say hello listeners and then when i press send um if i'm hooked up to an encoder it basically sends that text out to players so it, maybe you can do competitions or uh, you know, weather announcements or whatever, you can do that via the metadata. And of course, the robo voice also. And again, that can be hidden by just hitting that little button here with the arrow up on the left. Uh, most of the time, anywhere in Nextcast, you will see um, a tooltip. So if you just hover your mouse over the button, it will explain what uh, that feature does. So, uh, the backup and restore. So uh, a lot of uh, the users were used to seeing the backup and restore uh, in the help menu. We decided that that kind of fits better in our settings because it's it's more of a base feature. So just a reminder, a lot of people have been um, uh, requesting, oh, hey, where's my backup and restore? So it's basically moved here to settings and you just hit this button and then you get your backup restored just like you did before. One other cool feature uh, that we added recently is the tempo adjust. So I went here into settings. Hopefully everyone can see my screen good. Um, let's see if we got any. All right, everyone can see me. Okay, good. All right, just checking that. So uh, the tempo adjust feature uh, lets you, it's a twofold feature. So the first part of it is if you just check the tempo adjust, it allows you to set the pitch control. Um, so that you can speed up. So we had a couple of users, they're doing a, a traditional top 40 uh, type setup and they wanted their station to sound different. So they sped up their, their music a little bit to sound it, make it sound more uh, energetic. So again, on both players you have separate, but obviously you probably want to keep them the same. So uh, by setting it here, now I have a 1% faster um, pitch basically my track and, and it actually doesn't change the, the pitch it changes the tempo so it, it won't sound like Mickey Mouse it will just move faster it's uh, we also just to, to note uh, on version 5771 um, we had the older pitch engine and we updated it in 5780 so um, it's gonna sound a lot better now the other thing that we added is a tempo adjust to fit hour okay so if you check that box basically what nextcast will do if you properly set up your rotations and let me quickly show you how that looks here so my rotation is approximately one hour and four minutes so as long as you've made it over an hour then what will happen is the tempo adjust will speed up all the tracks in that hour with the exception of the sweepers, voice tracks, and commercials. So all the music will either be slightly slowed down or sped up the ranges between uh, negative two and positive four, I believe, maybe positive five. So basically what happens is time stretches that hour um, and from the test that we've done 
it gets you extremely close within one second pretty much every hour so it's a way to get to your top of the hour um, exactly um, and so it's a very great feature so um, I'm going to talk about the microcaster um, because I posted that on the forums a while back and I do have a detailed tutorial on how to do that. This uh, feature is going to be mainly for broadcasters who want to um, not encode and not go get your stream server and deal with all the problems that can come with internet um, radio. You can just use the micro server. So basically what that is, it's the built-in micro broadcaster like a shoutcast server um, and so if anyone is going to be connected to your stream they're going to be listening directly so from your home office or your home studio um, just making sure there's no questions yet okay well we'll go we'll go on and then if we have questions uh, towards the end I'll, I'll I'll give people a chance either to call in to call via Facebook or you can type it out uh, sometimes calling is easier so anyway I was talking about the microcaster so if I enable this, basically the outside world is able to get to this, and if they um, like go into Winamp and type this URL in, they can basically hear your stream. So it's a way to bypass the stream uh, server. Um, it's your your stream pretty much is very private, um, so um, not legal advice here at all. But in in my opinion, if you just send the links to your friends and family, or you're the only one listening, or maybe a couple of people. Um, the licensing is, is, is a question. Again, um, this is not legal advice. I have not uh, checked into it in detail, but this will be a private broadcast. Now, one additional thing we did is we put this button here where you re can request a free app for your micro server stream. So if I click this, uh, uh, it has to be enabled. Let's enable it. Let's see what happens here. So if I click this, I go to the My Radio Tuner website. I can type in my station name, my IP, and um, and then I can basically broadcast to the world. So that's the micro server feature. There's more details um, on our uh, website, or you can direct message me, and I can get that to you. The one other thing I wanted to talk about here, um, just to start, is in settings. There's this new button. It's called Song Pick Errors. Um, and you can click on that at, at any time. If you're running in rotation mode, that dialog will never show up. Um, but this is extremely helpful if, uh, let's try to do something on purpose here. I'm going to set my artist repeat, and this may not even work on here, but we're going to try it. Uh, so I know I'm going to reload the hour. Let's just see what happens here. All right, so we'll go into settings. Yeah, so basically I got a warning that my power category, my search depth went to 17%. So it had to go 17% into the list to find a track. Now 17% is okay. You want to try to stay below 50%. And um, so let's say I did go above 50%. Well, then what I would do is I would lower my artist and title repeat so that um, it has a better chance of picking. But again, in this scenario... Uh, because I have so many different artists, uh, it's not an issue. But some top 40, uh, probably, you know, a lot of formats may have a lot of artists that are similar. So, again, the song pick errors window will give you those errors and, and help you, um, uh, you know, diagnose those and change those. I'm going to set this back to a reasonable hour and a half. So, um, I think at this point, I really don't have much to say on the new versions, um, but if anybody wants to call, I know this is going to be a short session if nobody has any questions, um, but I think we can do some questions. So this, again, this is the first time we've done this. So, you know, kind of new at it. I just set up the, um, the Facebook Live stuff, so I just learned it all last night. Um, let's see, we, I think we're getting a message here. Uh, Let's see. Oh, here we go. All right. We're seeing somebody from South Africa, my home country. So let's see what they're saying here. Oh, they're just saying thank you. All right. I don't want to drag this on. So um, again, if you guys have any questions, any concerns, anything that you want me to talk about, 
Now is the time to ask. Let me just uh, get back here. All right. I don't see anybody commenting. I don't see anybody asking any questions. Um, l let me make another couple of notes that I think is important. I just talked to a customer this morning and um, he had an issue with his commercials. And the one thing that I will note is if you're using a, a server, a string server like Live 365 um, or anything that you're using at injection and probably generally what you want to do for your commercial category and, and let me kind of expand on that. When I click on my settings here, when I click music, these crossfade times and auto trim levels are pertinent to music. But if I click on commercials, it has a green highlight behind it. Now that is pertinent to my commercial types. I would suggest turning auto trim off because normally a commercial is going to be a set amount of time and you really uh, don't want the software to trim back either the beginning or the end because they're designed to be a certain length. So just a quick note on, on the auto trim for commercials. Uh, okay, he says I got questions. Can you explain how to use subfolders? All right, okay, you guys can stop now. <laughs> All right, uh, we have some questions here, so we'll get to them one by one. Oh, yes, okay, Randall Bishop, you had a question about uh, ducking. So um, I actually only have this microphone set up here, but um, oh my, I think I'm using the camera mic. Oh, well, okay. So Audio, attention, uh, audio attenuation or ducking when active. So in your microphone settings, so Randall Bishop had the question about ducking. Okay, so I go into my mic settings and there you can see the audio attenuation when mic is active. So this level here, if I set it to zero, that means it's not going to alter the music that's playing uh, at all. And the lower I go, the lower it will set my music right while I'm talking while the mic button is on so all you have to do is just set that if you want it to zero then basically when you turn on the mic it will not duck the music at all or lower the music but the higher you go the more the music will be ducked and lowered and so you can kind of get a proper level between your mic um, audio and the music that's playing in the background a couple of other things since we're on the mic settings here there's a mic effects and that basically allows you to set um, your compression on your microphone. So these are compression, audio compression settings. On the new version, there's also uh, EQ. So there's EQ settings that you can set for your mic. And something that you may not know, if you right click on any of these, you can actually change the center band. So you can customize all of the five center bands to adjust um, your mic level. So if you have certain frequencies you want to get the center of, um, then you can set it there. So again, you just right click and you can, I'm, I'm going to set this to 10,000 and I can change that so that I'm changing the center band at 10,000 hertz. And again, you can do that for all five. So that allows you to really customize your mic sound with this built-in processing. Uh, the other thing is mic auto gain, if that's checked, it will auto gain your mic. Sometimes that creates some background noise problems, so I don't encourage it. Um, but it can be useful if you have a very quiet studio and you have a lot of sound absorption. Uh, the auto gain can help because it can pull in your your uh, the frequencies in your voice and really make that sound full. The last thing we added here too is noise gate. So basically, you can set the dB threshold of the noise gate. And so that when you're taught, when you stop talking, the noise gate kills to pure silence. And then when you start talking, the noise gate opens back up. Again, this is built into the, uh, the mic processor if the microphone effects is on. The other thing to note here about since we're in microphone uh, settings, the mute mic monitor um, is a convenient way because of the way the Windows audio engine is built. There's always most of the time there's going to be a delay, right? There's a half a second, a quarter second, and, and if you have headphones on, that's really going to trip you up. Or it, it, it trips up some people. Some professional broadcasters are used to it, and it doesn't bother them. But for, for, for many of us, including me, 
Uh, it just trips me up. I can't talk like that. So the mute mic monitor, once if that is checked, then you will not hear your voice when you're talking, but the actual audio will go out to the stream. So that prevents that part. The one trick that I've done is um, you can put the headphone on one side of your ear and that, that's a little bit less if you do need to hear your own voice. Um, so that, that helps in there. There's also another way to use an external mixer using the line-in setting. I'll just, I'm not going to explain it in full, but um, you can use an external mixer. If you check it here, it gives you instructions. It's a little bit complicated, um, but we'll, we'll go over that later. Um, all right, so, okay, so Max Boogie suggested I talk about metadata, and, and this is a basic thing that is extremely important um, when we're talking about entering your music, especially if you want your artist repeat, your title repeat to work, you really need to make sure that the titles and the artists, uh, the song name for each of the tracks are, are, are properly entered. And the way you do that is here with the track list add music, just where you see all your categories. Um, so I'm here in my classic, or if I go to my high, I can click on any of these, and I see my information pull up here. You need to make sure all this information is correct. Um, one other note, you can add related artists. So um, if I wanted the software to recognize, let me see if there's a better, this may be a better one. So this one has two artists. It has featuring Taboo. So if I wanted to be extremely strict with my artist repeat, I can type in Taboo here in Related Artist, and, and then it sees this track as both Alice Godino and Taboo. I'm probably saying that wrong. But um, yeah, so we, we have those two. And then when you're done with that, you'll notice that there's a yellow highlight in the field because you modified it. So whenever you modify a field, you, it gets highlighted. Then you want to hit Update Tag, and then it will save that to the metadata. I uh, just want to click through here and see if there's anything else I want to talk about there. So the importance of correct metadata setting. OK, um, Joe, I think you're talking about um, subfolders. Uh, Joe, can you, let's see here. I'm going to type real quick, maybe. Uh, no. Going back here. All right, well, uh, you had a question about subfolders here. Let me reload my page. I think I'm out of date here in one second. So our first live stream, so so far not too bad, but we're going to end here quickly. I don't like to make things long, so um, subfolders. So, Joe, I think what you're talking about is you can have Nextcast set up to work in a remote directory. Um, it's, uh, version Pro and Broadcast allows you to point to either a network drive or somewhere else where you get all your data. So here uh, on my D drive, all my music and everything is stored there. You can use that as a shared, like use a Dropbox or Google Drive, and then you can have multiple people basically seeing the same thing at the same time. So if anyone has questions about that, I may not have expanded on that properly. Um, but okay, so where can we use? Okay, we talked about that. So for, for using an external mixer, we've created a workaround. Um, and I believe I placed the instructions in the user manual. Manual. If not, I will send that to you. But basically, you're going to use this checkbox here. The audio going out of Nextcast will go into the mixer. There, you will add your mics and everything else. And then coming back out of the mixer, it's going to go back into the Nextcast line in. So uh, I don't have a line in hooked up now, but you would have that. And then basically, when this is checked, uh, it sends the, the mixed audio coming out of your mixer to the encoders. So again, this is kind of a workaround, and it only um, works when the line in button is active. So um, yeah, um, okay. So I think, uh, let's see, how long have we talked? Oh, it's only been 20 minutes. So we can take a couple more questions. Um, so if anybody else wants to, to ask a question, I'll kind of look around here. Um, to see if there's anything else. Uh, just a quick note, so just because I saw this here. So he said, okay, let's try Calvin Harris. 
Okay, let's go to my recents. Recent. So I'm going to go to Calvin Harris. So one thing I, well, geez, it's not even in here. All right. You'll notice that when um, when you highlight a track here in track list add music, you'll see this red here. So that means that as a, it has a high tune out ratio, meaning that when that song plays, there were many people that tuned out. And then I'm going to go through my list here. And then when it's green, then you'll see that there are less people tuned out when that track was was played. You can also see more information about that, like if I go to my view statistics here, I can go, for instance, I'll go to my power category and process report. It shows me from the most popular track to the re least popular track. Um, and so then you can check the popularity of your tracks by doing that, the green ones, the negative numbers are better because less people tuned out. The positive numbers are worse. So using the statistics, you can quickly see uh, what um, how, how popular a track is. I have a question regarding AAC. Um, well, AAC is basically a licensed um, higher compression ratio. Um, so. I'm not, I, I will send you a direct message about that because you have to get licensing or you have to load Winamp on your computer to properly run that. Basically what it is, it's just a higher compression ratio. If you are running at 128K regular MP3, that's fine. AAC uh, degrades the stream slightly. It has a better ratio of bitrate to quality, but essentially 128K is fine if you can run that. It's, AAC is just meant to get more data, um, you know, more sound quality for less data throughput. Now, you know, as the world turns, we, we know that, that um, our, our bandwidth for our internet connections are getting higher and higher, you know, stream uh, data bandwidth is getting cheaper. So uh, I, don't, I don't really think it's something that is necessary, but some people like to have a mobile stream and AAC helps with that. I will send you a direct message um, so, okay, cool. So, uh, station or stream monitor. Okay. Um, thank you for, for mentioning that. I have my, my, um, my wingman helping me direct the topics here. So, um, if I check this auto start stream monitor, it's a free service that's built into Nextcast. And you'll see that, uh, this pops up here and basically it monitors your stream and it allows you to create reports for sound exchange. Um, so I'm not really going to go into too much detail um, because if you know, not everyone's going to use this. But if you are going directly with sound exchange, this gives you in a very easy way to create the report to submit to sound exchange um, for for the licensing part of that. And that runs as a service. So when you check this box, you will see that it uh, comes up, well, I closed it. <laughs> Let me open it again here. You'll see that it comes up here as a service. It's got that little Wi-Fi stream monitor. And so then you can see that there. Um, yeah, so it's a helpful way to do reports um, for, for, and it'll log the artist. It will log the SIRC code. And then if I look for my performance report, it will open it up. It creates an Excel-based um, performance report. Um, yeah, and again, nothing was played on this system, so it hasn't, it doesn't have anything. But if you have questions about Stream Monitor, again, it's a free utility that that's built into Nextcast. Um, so yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, you know what? Let's get this thing going. We're gonna let it play a little bit of music here. Um, I'm gonna go through just because. All right, I'm just letting it play through a few tracks here so we can have a little bit of history. So the um, played search history option, uh, when you're on the playlist rotation screen, you see this button is green, um, but you also see that there's an option to click search, 
click to search plate history. So if I click it, basically I have a new window that pops up and it allows me to see the plate history of everything that's played, the listener counts, the album, etc. I can also do a count to currents and I can do date ranges so I can look from April 1st to April 13th, search for everything and it shows me everything that it's played um, during those dates. So the search history can be found here on the playlist rotation screen. When it's green, you'll see that little bracketed um, text there that says click to search play history. And um, yeah, so that's helpful there. All right, we're ready for the next question. Um, hopefully I'm not missing anyone. I'm looking here on my other tablet to see any questions. Uh, Joe, if you're still checking it out, uh, if you want to comment on the, the the question that I answered, hopefully I answered it correctly, or I got your drift. If not, let me know. I can clarify. I will say, I guess I'll take this opportunity to really thank, there, there are certain individuals, um, when we started NextCast seven years ago, um, we didn't think it was going to get this far. Um, it's really evolved into a very powerful program. Um, it can pretty much do what all the other programs, even the, the very professional, the very expensive programs can do, but we believe we've laid it out in a much more easier to use fashion. And I, I want to thank, you know, Max Boogie, who's Jim. Um, I also want to thank Joe Agostino. Um, I'm probably forgetting some other people. But um, there's a lot of people out there that have really helped me, sent me feedback, and they, uh, they actually use our, our beta versions and, and test them for us. So thank you very much, guys. Um, let me show voice tracking. So when you're in rotation mo mode, um, you can actually voice track a lot. So I can actually go in here and insert a voice track, and it will load the song that's before it and the song after. Um, I can. So I hit play to voice track, and then when I'm ready to record. All right, guys, we are voice track testing live with Nextcast with our rotation. I'm going to hit my next start, and I'm going to stop recording. And so you'll see basically in rotation mode, I'm able to voice track. So I've just created that voice track. I can preview and hear um, what it sounds like. And let's see here. Let me turn on my... Okay, I didn't have my audio on for that one, but let's just see here. Okay, so I'm going to fast forward in here, and, and it's probably going to sound absolutely... Well, no, you'll hear it. Okay. Right now, today's dance music news. This is the EDF Minute with Hollywood on Oh, okay. So, the voice track is next. We are voice track testing live with Nextcast with our rotation. I'm going to hit my next start. Dance music and to a worldwide audience. All right. I mean, I was... <laughs> when you talk about radio, I mean, that, that was, you know, that was just an example. I just wanted to show you that you can um, voice track a, a live rotation. It's something that I've done. We've added that feature a while back, and, you know, not many people know about it. Now, the way most people voice track is uh, they're going to generate so let's just say I'll just I'm just gonna generate one hour um, just to show you so that they would generate one hour and then they would click on the playlist and then this is where they would voice track so basically the same process we have other videos showing voice tracking but um, you get the idea basically you can go through each track it loads the previous and next track and then um, then you get to voice track and then when the this playlist plays out then you're gonna have those voice tracks uh, play out as if you were live so uh, let's just see if there's anything else here alright I'm creating a schedule oh gosh okay I may have to get with you later, Joe, but I think maybe you're talking about the what I just showed now, hopefully. 
where you have the folders. So yeah, let me do another example. I'm going to generate a few more hours. So let's generate six hours uh, for today. All right. Oops. Okay. There I get my warning that some of my artist repeat is a little high. Again, many of them, my new music is high at 75, and that's okay. But again, these, these um, search depth warnings um, will tell you kind of if you need to tone down your artist repeat or add or more artists or less artists. Okay, so um, what he was talking about, basically, now that I've created the date um, for 4.13.19, if I click on it, I can see each of my hours. So I can go ahead and click each of my hours. And again, that's how you would voice drag. So, um, yeah. Well, you know what? I, I think 30 minutes is kind of a long enough for now. Um, we just tried this for the first time and we just wanted to get some people together. Um, I think that we can maybe do a better job next time and maybe we'll do some more prepped questions. I think what we'll do next time is we'll pre-ask the questions so that you guys can get them into me um, and then that way I can answer them one at a time and everyone can learn together. And um, so again, thank you so much for joining this on, on this um, is it possible to generate from a category I choose? Okay, so we just got a question and we'll quickly cover that one. Yes, so the what is generated per day is based on your schedule. So whatever rotation schedules you have set up, that dictates what rotation is used for what hour. So hopefully um, I, I answered that. That was a quick answer, but again, the, the question from Sis Horlings, I'm sorry if I butchered that, um, is basically can you choose what categories it picks from to generate and again the schedule whatever you schedule your rotations that is how the, the generated hours are going to be generated they use those particular rotations to generate that hour so okay cool all right guys well thank you again for joining us and uh, it was great to hear from you I'm glad we have a little bit of an audience there and we didn't really promote it that much so uh, next time we'll do a little bit of a uh, job promoting it and uh, again I think we will ask people to pre-ask their questions and um, and then we'll keep going with NextCast. Thank you guys so much. Hope you guys have a great afternoon. Enjoy your Saturday.